things like mobile phones became just a simple extension of who we are, Chris already saw which way the environment was going. When it comes to the music identification application Shazam, everybody, Chris, that I have spoken to and told them that I'm going to be talking to you has been so super excited. Hands up who uses Shazam. All right. Okay. I think so I see you've got three a biased... potential new users. <laughs> well, Chris, we'll find them later. Don't you worry. I can see you. <laughs> We thought, gosh, wouldn't it be great to do something with these mobile phones? Because at that time, all you could do was make phone calls and send text messages to people, and there was nothing else you could do on a mobile phone. And we thought, there's got to be something else. We've got to find a way to do it. How can we do it? And one of the key motivating things for me in the early days of Shazam was when we pitched to a venture capitalist. He said to us, I don't see why anyone would ever use this. The first challenge was that it was impossible. Because you have to keep in mind that when we were starting Shazam, the iPod had not yet been invented, and iTunes had not yet been invented. So that means there was no market for digital music. Because we had this great idea, you know, you're just going to hold your phone up, it's going to listen, and then identify a song. We were just so far ahead of our time. And when we went to the world experts in music technology, who are all PhDs in electrical engineering with a focus on digital signal processing, specialized in audio signal processing, and mostly out of either MIT Media Lab or Stanford's Center for Computer Research in Music and Acoustics. And they all said that there is no technology that can do this, and we have no idea how you would invent such a technology. But we asked this professor, can you please rank the five smartest on this list? Where he said, the number one rank is a guy named Avery Wang. So he joined. But the next problem was that he also thought it was impossible. <laughs> and this is what we had to work with. This was the most popular phone in the year that Shazam launched. As you dialed a four digit phone number, a voice phone call, we said, hold your phone to the music. And then after 15 seconds, we would hang up the call and send a text message directly to your phone with the name of the song. And that was Shazam. It's a story of persistence, or what I like to call creative persistence, to overcome all the challenges that you have to face. And we had no music, and there were no databases of digital music that were available to us. Being a scrappy startup, we had to build that music database from the ground up. And we created our own software that enabled us to put CDs into computers. And then we had these high school students type the name of every single song, every single artist, every single album from every single CD around the clock for a year. So we could create a giant fingerprint database. And so today, Shazam has had well over a billion downloads around the world hundreds of millions of monthly active users. It was once said, the greatest mistake is to think that what you did yesterday will be sufficient for tomorrow. As an entrepreneur, I learned that you have to come up with more than just one great idea. You actually have to come up with hundreds or even thousands of great ideas to succeed. Organizations have a tough problem. Their people need to deliver on the plan, but we also want them to take risks and to be innovative. Go down and go up, up, down. This guy's amazing. Woo! Let's give him a hand, Chris Byrne. I also learned, both from creating Shazam and then from later working for eight years at Google and then four years at Dropbox, that sometimes this obsession to create something using technology that's very simple comes from building something that's incredibly complex. And that's the most amazing simplicity you can create. Google was an incredible learning experience of innovation for me. There was this philosophy of wanting to innovate on everything and every aspect, not just technology, um, whether it was you know, hiring, human resources, um, culture, the use of office space, Everything, everything they like to reinvent from the ground up and kind of question the way things were done. My mission is to not only teach, but also inspire leaders to bring the entrepreneurial mindset to their organizations. 
So you never give up. Yeah, yeah, never give up. Persistence, yeah. <laughs> it was once said, create with the heart, build with the mind. Creative persistence is the combination of both to find innovative solutions to real problems. There is a methodology and a mindset to this that any team can employ. That's a reason for you to come back next year. <laughs>